Remember to turn on all notifications so you don't miss a video. Blue Lock has a glaring problem with its theme that will forever hold it back from greatness. I've explained my issues with this manga in multiple shorts and videos, but a lot of people just watch the shorts despite the words full in description always being in the title, and others are just bad at listening. So I'm going to compile all of my issues with the theme into one essay. Let's get the proceedings proceeding this evening. Let's start with the positives. Blue Lock can write decent characters, a decent plot, and is actually good at executing a theme, mostly. If my theme is, being selfish is good, then there are two main ways I can execute this theme, a positive way and a negative way. The positive way would be rewarding characters who play selfishly, and the negative way would be punishing characters who play selflessly. Any viewer should be able to extract what the theme is based on what actions are rewarded and punished. This is basic writing that most stories follow. Blue Lock is actually competent at this. In chapter 1, Isagi chooses to pass the ball to a teammate when he is in front of the goal. The teammate shoots and misses. As a result, his team loses the game. Isagi performs a selfless action and is punished for it. From this scene alone, the theme is obviously promoting selfishness. When Isagi thinks back to this moment, he's regretting that he didn't shoot it himself and wonders if he would have won if he did. What's interesting is that right after, he believes that they didn't lose because he played selflessly, believing that soccer is a team sport. This is how many character arcs are written. They start off opposing the theme, but then change their beliefs to align with the theme. This is when Ego comes in to explicitly state the theme. This is what he says, quote, Japan only requires one thing to become the strongest powerhouse in football, and that is the creation of a revolutionary striker, end quote. If that wasn't enough proof, he says this next, quote, What is football to all of you? A sport where you try to score goals in teams of 11 members? Well, that's wrong. That way of thinking is exactly why Japan lacks football skills. I will show you what it's all about. Football is, at its core, a sport about scoring goals, even at the expense of your teammates. The best player is the one that scores the most goals. End quote. When a character named Kira defends their national team and the team values, what does Ego do? He insults them by saying that they haven't won a World Cup and says, quote, I don't care about that trash, end quote. He then gives examples of egotistic players to support his claim, and this inspires Isagi, the protagonist. If you tell me that the theme of this manga at this point isn't that strikers should be selfish and that the best player on the team is the one with the most goals, you're either lying or you don't understand how themes work. Even in my first video, I said that this theme could change down the line, but that I doubted that. Now, I'll be dissecting these themes and how nonsensical they are. Japan only needs a revolutionary striker. Isn't Messi a revolutionary striker? Hasn't he played in 4 World Cups for Argentina and won 0? I guess he's not a revolutionary striker, right? Did Ronaldo also appear in 4 World Cups for Portugal and win none? I guess he's not revolutionary either. I could stop here because I've already proved my point with this example, but I'll dissect this even more. These are the two greatest footballers of our generation, but by Ego's logic, they wouldn't be revolutionary. That alone should show you how short-sighted and simplified this manga's view on the sport is. Soccer cannot be dumbed down to good striker equals good team. Next quote. Football is at its core, a sport about scoring goals, even at the expense of your teammates. End quote. I do agree that football is about scoring goals. The team who scores the most goals wins, but that doesn't mean that the team who scores the most is superior. Soccer is a unique sport where the best team isn't always the victor. The team that can finish their chances is the one who wins. A tie doesn't mean both teams are equal. Games are often 0-0. Does that mean both teams were equally trashed because they couldn't score? No, you'd have to watch the footage and evaluate a lot of different factors to determine which team was better. What about this example? Team A has possession for 90% of the game, but Team B scored an early goal and parked the bus for the rest of the game, making the score 0-1 in Team B's favor. Does that mean that Team B is better? Not necessarily. And then there's the part about at the expense of your teammates. This is dumb. If you're a selfish player with an insane ego, what makes you think that your teammates don't also have their own ego and pride? Eventually, they'll probably stop passing to you, regardless of how good you are. They're not gonna bow down and lick your boots, especially if you're at a professional level. The second half of the quote is, the best player is the one that scores the most goals. This is dumb too. I'm not saying that the best player can't be the one that scores the most goals, but goal count is not an accurate way of measuring who the best player is. This sounds like the view of a child who watches football and only cares when goals are being scored. Using goals as a measurement of quality is incredibly biased towards forwards, the ones who are supposed to score. I can simplify this argument down to, the player who scores the most goals in a match is the player of that match. Alright, 
What about a midfielder who is the playmaker and allows the forwards to score, giving them the most assists? What about a defender who shuts down the opposing team's best forwards for an entire game? What about a goalie who blocks several near goals and keeps a clean sheet? With Blue Dog's childish mentality, none of these players can be the player of the game because they didn't score the most goals. Even if you've never watched or played soccer, you should be beginning to see how bad this theme is. I take it a step further and call it insulting to any fans of the sport. Now, I'll bring in examples from other stories to assist in illustrating the idiocy of this theme, starting with Haikyuu. This is probably the most popular and critically acclaimed sports anime and manga, so I'll put it under the lens of Blue Lock. Football and volleyball are similar in the fact that they have specific positions for their players, and one player can't just do everything. So the theme here would be, the best player is the one who scores the most points. This means that the games where Nishinoya was making insane saves to keep his team in the games are meaningless. He wasn't the player of the game because he had zero points. And when Tsukishima shut down Shiratorizawa's ace scorer, he wasn't the player of the match because he didn't score as much as his spikers. And all the times Kageyama's elite setting is keeping the team alive, he isn't the best player at the moment because he's not the one scoring. And Oikawa and Atsumu Miya aren't the best players on their teams because they're setters, which means they aren't scoring the most points. You see how dumb this sounds? My next example is from a brilliant football show called Ted Lasso. In the show, the main team's best player is a selfish and arrogant player who likes scoring and doesn't like passing. This is the kind of player Blue Lock aims to create. When the coach forces him to become a decoy, he gets mad and starts slacking off. Eventually, he learns the importance of passing, even when he has an open goal, and it actually leads to a win. But as the story goes on, he becomes too selfless and this makes him a mediocre player. He has to learn that there's a time to be selfless and a time to be selfish. The arc was perfect. It is actually accurate to the sport and a great lesson that can be applied to your actual game. Football and sports, in general, aren't just black and white. Only a child deals in absolutes. A mature person knows that there is nuance. Even Haikyuu shows this off with Kageyama's character arc and is extremely similar. He has to learn that there's a time to be controlling and a time to let others take control. It's embarrassing that a western show can write better than a manga slash anime. Ted Lasso doesn't even spend 100% of his time on the sport but it's still a better football story than Blue Lock. There's more dumb stuff past chapter 1 of Blue Lock. First, there's the contradiction of the characters playing different positions. If a striker is all that matters, and all the players in the camp are strikers, how come they aren't all playing the striker position? Why are there goalies, defenders, and midfielders? By playing these positions, they are conceding that a striker isn't the only thing that makes a good team. But the author doesn't seem to be aware of this concession, which is poor writing. Here are some more quotes from the first few volumes that reinforce the terrible theme this manga has adopted. Chapter 3 has this quote. The most important thing for Japan to become the best country in the world is not the teamwork between 11 players, it's to have a hero among them. End quote. With all my analysis so far, you should be able to explain how this is dumb on your own. Additionally, what happens if that hero gets injured or a red card? Then your team loses because you put all your eggs in one basket thanks to your childish perspective. Chapter 8 has this quote, Football and the teams within it are born from a top-notch striker, end quote. Again, my previous paragraphs already debunked this idiocy. Chapter 24 has a long one. It says this, quote, What the best striker in the world requires is the repeatability of a goal. It is true that the most dramatic goals are the ones that leave lasting impressions. There are a lot of players capable of such feats around the world, and yet, why is it that they cannot pull such a goal once more? This is because it was nothing but the result of a mere fluke. What you need right now is a formula to produce and create as many goals as it takes. Understand the formula that allows your best skills to thrive, and then make full use of it. A world-class striker is one who possesses their own unique formula to score goals. All of you are still surviving out of sheer luck, but that will not get you anywhere. Know that repeatability is not a trait that comes after success, but instead the very foundation of it. Abolish the idea of winning by chance and claim victory as a logical sequence. End quote. This is goofy. I'll go over this sentence by sentence. The repeatability of a goal is not what the best striker requires. Look at Ronaldo and Messi. How many goals have they repeated and what percent of their total goals are repeated? In fact, you could probably apply this to any great striker and see how they don't rely on specific formulas if they even have one, or repeat goals that often. There are too many unpredictable factors in soccer to create a formula that will always work. Only a child deals in absolutes. A good player has to be able to adapt to their situations. 
Then he does his fluke goals. An amazing goal that can't be replicated doesn't mean it was a fluke. Was there luck involved? Absolutely. But it's the player's skill combined with the luck of the situation that creates these amazing goals. Football has something called the Puskas Award, which goes to the most beautiful goal of the year. In 2013, Zlatan won it with a 30-yard bicycle kick. His situation was lucky, and it'd be incredibly hard for anyone to replicate that goal in a real game, but it wasn't a fluke. His skill is what allowed him to put it in. Because of his skill and his ability to adapt, he was able to give his team a goal. I could apply this logic to several Puskas winners. To call these goals a mere fluke is despicable. Ego continues to talk about his formula, but I already dissected that. Ego disses luck and says repeatability is the foundation behind success. According to who though? And based on what evidence? None of the strikers I've played with or played against have had formulas for scoring goals. And as far as I know, neither do pros. Think about it like this. If I'm a defender and the striker I'm defending scores a goal, I saw how they scored the goal and I'm going to make sure it doesn't happen again. The next time he tries the same formula, I'ma shut him down and put him on his butt. The only way he's scoring is if he adapts and changes up his strategy. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me can't get fooled again. So my counter quote would be, adaptability is the foundation of success. Claiming victory as a logical sequence is so childish. Only a child deals in absolutes. I was planning on using chess as an example where that would work, but when I thought about it, even that's not true. While there are multiple predictable factors in chess, there are still thousands of scenarios that you can't perfectly account for, otherwise there'd be a perfect formula for winning every chess match, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there is. All this formula stuff is shown in the following chapters. We see characters have domains and zones, which is the area of the field where their chances of scoring skyrockets. Distance and goal angle are factors here. We see Baro, Tsurugi's, and Kunigami's domains. We also see Chikiri, Kunigami, and Isagi's weapons, which is their strongest attribute. Finally, we see Isagi's formula, which is his vision times his direct shot. What's tragic is that all this domain, weapon, formula, and awakening stuff would probably make for a cool power system, but it just doesn't work in soccer. There's no place for absolute rules like these in sports. Finally, there's a lack of self-awareness this manga has. I explained this in part 2 of my critique, but the characters use teamwork to win but never acknowledge that fact. The main team scores the last goal by linking up passes. In the match played after the formula is brought up, the team scores their winning goal by Isagi making a play that takes advantage of all their teammates' unique skills. In chapter 36, the chain of passes is Isagi, Bachira, Chigiri, Isagi, Kunigami, Rachi, Bachira, and then Isagi who scores. That's 5 people touching the ball before scoring. I don't know about you, but that looks like teamwork to me. What happened to selfishness? So after events like this, does the story A acknowledge that Ego is wrong about soccer, or B act like nothing's changed? It does B, and that's bad writing. I've had people tell me you can't judge the story until you finished it. If I can write a 5 page essay about my major problems with just the first 5 volumes, why would I want to continue? If the same problems have stayed so far and new problems are constantly being introduced, why would I roll the dice and hope that it changes down the line? You can judge a story before it's finished. It's less likely that your criticisms actually remain throughout the story, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. It's possible that all my problems with Blue Lock stay until the very end. That means you're telling me to read something I dislike and might continue to dislike, just so my opinion is valid to you? That's ridiculous. If you want to counter my claims, counter them with arguments and evidence. But don't give me that you didn't finish it crap. Another thing I've heard is it gets better. It's virtually the same argument I've heard from Boruto fans. If the story starts off bad but gets better, that doesn't eliminate all the bad at the start. Honestly, this story could reset and turn into an accurate and respectable soccer manga like Aoashi, but the grade I'd give it will always be limited by the way it started. In conclusion, Blue Lock's name is terrible because of how it tries to simplify football into simple and universal rules that lack any nuance. For example, strikers are what win a team, most goals equals best player, and formulas to create success. These messages are contradictory to how the actual sport works and are insulting to any fan of football or sports in general. Only a Sith, I mean child deals in absolutes. Am I going to continue reading or watching? Probably, but only because I have a channel and I can create content out of it. If I didn't have one, I'd have no incentive to continue. Thank you for watching. 
please like, comment, share, subscribe, and help me revolutionize the manga industry by buying my manga and spreading the word. All important links will be in the description.